Shalom, and welcome to Messiah of Israel Ministries, Hebraic Roots Teachings. I'm Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat, and today we're going to be speaking about En Gedi. En Gedi is the place where King David fleed to the mountains to hide from Saul, as Saul was trying to kill him for years. Saul finds out about the whereabouts of King David. He sends 3,000 men to search for King David. Something fabulous happens, remarkable and supernatural. Let's read the Word of God. We'll be looking at the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 24. After Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told that David is in the desert of En Gedi. So Saul took 3,000 able young men from all Israel and set out to look for David and his men near the crags of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens along the way a cave was there, and Saul went to relieve himself. David and his men were far back in the cave. The men said, This is the day the Lord spoke of when he said, To you I will give your enemy into your hands, for you to deal with as you wish. Then David crept up unnoticed and cut off the corner of Saul's robe. We're going to stop right here at verse 4 and then we'll continue. This is an amazing account. Saul takes 3,000 men to run after David. He wants to kill him. By the way, he's been trying to kill David for years. He tries to kill David and he runs to the mountains, to the caves of En Gedi. What are the chances or the coincidences that Saul would walk into the same cave that King David is there? First of all, the word coincidence is not in the Bible. Everything's ordained by God. We know this is a God thing. David has an opportunity to kill Saul. David's men see the opportunity and they say, today is the Lord's day. Today God is going to deliver your enemy to your hands. David would not touch God's anointed, but he cuts off a piece of Saul's robe. He then tells his men not to raise a hand against Saul. David would not raise a hand against God's anointed, who by the way was his father-in-law because David was married to Saul's daughter. After killing Goliath, he received two prizes, two gifts. One was he wouldn't pay taxes for the rest of his life, and the other one that he would marry Michal, which is Saul's daughter. So this is his father-in-law that's trying to kill him for years. And we continue from verse 5. Afterward, David's conscience stricken for having cut off a corner of his robe. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lay hand on him for he is anointed of the Lord. With these words, David sharply rebuked his men. He did not allow them to attack Saul, and Saul left the cave and went his own way. I believe that the Lord brought David there as a test to see if he was obedient to the word, to see if he would trust God enough to take care of his enemies. Yeshua HaMashiach says in Matthew 5 verse 44, love your enemies. Everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the new. Messiah Yeshua is from the branch of David. This is a foreshadow of Yeshua HaMashiach. Why did Yeshua HaMashiach tell us to love our enemies? Why did he tell us to pray for our enemies? Because when you pray for your enemy, it's very hard to be angry with him. Something happens, something supernatural happens. And David was doing exactly the words that Yeshua HaMashiach spoke about during his three and a half year ministry. Love your enemies. David knew that God had a plan. David knew that God will take care of it. And David knew that ultimately there would be something here that glorifies God and God will somehow work in the life of Saul and in the life of David. That God will somehow work this out for good. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, chapter 50, verse 20, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Praise the Lord. David knew that God had a plan. We continue now from verse 8. Then David went out of the cave and called out to Saul, My Lord King. When Saul looked behind him, David bowed down with his face down to the ground. He said to Saul, Why do you listen when men say, David is bent on harming you? This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into my hands, into the cave. Some urge me to kill you but I spared you. I said, I will not lay my hands on God's anointed because he is the Lord's anointed. See my fathers, look at the piece of the robe in my hand. I cut off the corner of your robe, but did not kill you. See that there is nothing in my hand to indicate that I am guilty of wrongdoing or rebellion. 
I have not wronged you, but you are hunting me down to take my life. May the Lord judge between you and me, and may the Lord avenge the wrongs you have done to me. But my hand will not touch you, as the old saying goes, for evildoers come evil deeds, so my hand will not touch you. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. You talk about the Bible where it says vengeance is mine. David was exactly proclaiming that. He knew that God will judge between us. This is uh, unbelievable. This is really what it means to love your enemies. This is really what it means to love those that persecute you. And we continue from verse 14. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Who are you pursuing? A dead dog? A flea? May the Lord be our judge and decide between us. May he consider my cause and uphold it. When David finished saying this, Saul asked, Is that your voice, David, my son? And he wept out loud. You are more righteous than I, he said. You have treated me well, but I have treated you badly. You have just now told me about the good you did to me. The Lord delivered me into your hands, but you did not kill me. When a man finds his enemy, does he let him go, get away, unharmed? May the Lord reward you well for the way you have treated me today. I know that you will surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hands. Now swear to me by the Lord that you will not kill my descendants or wipe out my name from my father's family. So David gave his oath to Saul. Then Saul returned home, but David and his men went up to the stronghold. Well, you meant it for evil, but God turned it into good. Praise the Lord. Finally, Saul realizes that David is the one that's anointed from God, that David will be the king of Israel. A few things that are often overlooked in this chapter. Number one, we realize that Saul came to kill David with 3,000 men. There is something that's often overlooked in this chapter. Saul took 3,000 men to kill David. Saul asked David, who are you? Is that you, David, my son? There's no mention of the 3,000 men. How did Saul prevent these 3,000 men that came to kill David and never touched him. How is that possible? The Bible doesn't record that he stopped the 3,000 men, does it? This is a foreshadow of Romans 8.31. If God is for us, who can be against us? This is a picture of Yeshua the Messiah. When God has a plan for your life, when you're in the will of God, when you're in the anointed of God, it doesn't matter if it's 3,000 men or 9,000 men, God will protect you. And that's exactly what happened in this situation. The 3,000 men were not able to touch David because David was protected by the Holy Spirit, because David was protected by Yeshua HaMashiach. You and I, when we walk in the will of God, we are protected by the blood of Yeshua the Messiah and God will enable us to go through any situation in a cave or wherever we are. David, who would not lay hands on God's anointed, was now declared the King of Israel by Saul. We give all the glory to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Aryeh Yehuda, Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat sending you and your loved ones blessing from Israel in the name of Yeshua. Amen.